Hello everyone and welcome back to LCS Challengers. Next matchup on the horizon and I'm not gonna lie looking at this one it definitely looks like it's gonna be a little bit of a difficult journey here for Team Fish Taco yeah. as they do have to go up against the 9 and 1 Team Liquid Challengers who have scaled so well in the summer split. I'm excited for the match because hey if we get to see something come out of Team Fish Taco here that just means we get to see that improvement, Kangas, and that's what this is about. Yeah, and that's a good point, actually, because we did not have a lot of expectation for Team Fish Taco yesterday against FlyQuest, and they were able to pick up a win. So shout-outs to them. Uh, they And that win was not close, Josh. We were no. both casting that one. <laughs> uh, Rose Orange just bodied in the jungle, went for invade after invade, and got giga-fed. If we had that version of Team Fish Taco and TLC plays... Uh, as disrespectful as Flyquist like Challengers was played after those early uh, plays. Who knows? Maybe this does turn into an interesting series. True. But expectation is Team Liquid are far and above the best team in the league and should make quick work of Team Fish Taco. Yeah, this is actually my first time going to be casting a Team Liquid Challengers game this Ooh. split. And so I'm curious to see, right? I made fun of Cubby a lot in spring for being the only one to ever cast Team Liquid losses. If I can continue that streak into summer, I think we're in for a very good split. That hater Joshi energy is just continuing on over here. Hate. He doesn't it's stop. Awesome. This is a full-time job for you, huh? It is. <laughs> yeah. Cubby, do you deny the allegations? Are you, are you beating <laughs> these right now? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Well, we'll get to talking a little bit more about Team Labor like, Challengers in a bit. Let's talk about this Team Fish Taco Squad first. And honestly, that game yesterday, I was on the... I was on the path to LCS channel and I saw that Team Fish Taco tweeted out how many wins they had up against Flyquist Challengers in that first game. And I instantly had to tune in and see what was going on. It was, there was, there was some craziness happening to Joshi. Yeah, we've definitely seen a lot of crazy things coming out from Team Fish Taco, and so much of them are always based upon how a couple of their more veteran players have been performing. Rose Thorn yesterday having a fantastic performance going into UG, and of course, Spawn, another player that we have had our eyes on for a little while really stepping up and becoming a lot more aggressive over the past two splits and hopefully can continue that into Team Liquid. And Lunasia also got a solo kill again against Faisal, which was a big deal because Lunasia has not been leading the charge yet this summer split in that it is actually Bradley who is leading the charge there, Ooh. who is his uh, top lane opponent right now. Especially too, Lunasia was someone I was so excited about in spring, so I want to see it going up against Bradley and Team Liquid Honda Challengers today, how that's going to be faring out as, of course, when we talk about Team Liquid Challengers, I mean, this is a name that has a little bit they're of good. prestige to it. They're they're pretty they're, yeah. they're pretty good at the game, I would say. Yeah, they've won a couple uh, proving rounds. The two-time winners uh, previously in 2022 in both spring and summer, and then after a mediocre, I, I suppose, uh, start to the regular season from Team Liquid, but their really deep run to make it into top four, and what yep. would have been the land portion of the 2023 spring playoffs, it is really impressive to see coming from these guys, and they are really picking it up from there. The way that they've been playing has been fantastic, and I love to quote from Spawn, where he was saying that near APA, both of them willing to step into carry roles, both of them willing to step into supportive roles, it makes drafting for the squad so easy. And a reminder that there's only one returning member from the 2022 uh, roster in Bradley in the top lane. I think he's having arguably his best split. I know in spring we were, had a lot of eyes on him. Like, okay, how is he going to level up? How is he going to be the guy? The returning champ. Is he that guy? And not fully. I mean, he didn't have a terrible split in spring. Okay. I'm not going to say it was trash, but it wasn't like this level up. I feel like we're starting to see that in this summer split where I actually have been noticing Bradley step up. I know that Fake God is actually also another top laner that's really turning heads right now. Um, and actually, Miss Quota Fake Out is currently leading the charge. Bradley and Ludasi are technically tied for second place um, for the solo kill department. So Bradley still competition for him. Uh, right. But I think that Bradley can I've seen make different that stats. push in the summer. I've seen different, different stats. stats. I've seen Niles and Yuji as the tied for number uh, one. Oh well, Niles. For so well, okay. This this was going into the week, so this could have oh, changed into the over week. the weekend. Yeah, <gasps> old yeah. news yeah. at this. Old point. news. <laughs> old news. That is true. We had we've had had a lot of League of Legends, so. Uh... Sorry, Kangas, you're you're a, you're a little behind the times here, but I suppose so. well, instead of looking at the top lane, well, why not when we're looking at Team Liquid Challengers, let's talk about Mira a little bit because Mira is someone that we actually have, especially two in his brain, talked about at length. Yeah, Mira 
has been one of the most impressive players after joining this squad and was our spring most valuable prospect because of how effectively they were able to navigate so much of this game. Now, what we do see from Mir, the thing that is most impressive to me is their ability to play a variety of different styles and basically no matter what kind of situation they find themselves in, still able to come out on top, whether it be on more supportive junglers or on something more engaging like the Wukong. Yeah, and we'll talk more about Mira as well once we dive into some more specific clips. That one, I, we were also just trying to highlight how well Team Liquid play together. Yeah. If you look, Mir gets into a really rough position to start things off. He's looking for a flank. Everybody dives onto him. He buys like 15 seconds of time for the team to join in. And then the rest of the fight gets really chaotic, but it shows how well the team sticks together. I think that's one of the uh, buffs that they have from being the same roster from spring coming into summer. Not many other rosters have even like four or three returning members onto them. So Team Liquid definitely jumping out to the lead, I think partly because of that. But now we can start to look more at what Mir is doing. This is another look at our play of the week from week one that we were able to vote on uh, on Twitch chat live on Saturday. Mir has been putting on insane carry performances. Yeah, and it seems to be a kind of a return to form, right? This was the Mir back when he was known as Arthur playing back in the LCO that we were really excited about. When he came over to North America to play during during spring, he ended up playing a lot more of these kind of engaging champs, a lot more of these like pseudo engaged champs, a lot of opportunities to make the rest of his team look good. But as we start taking a little bit more look at his history as well across the board, we know this guy has had a story journey throughout his yep. career, starting off with uh, well, he actually played in O's first, but then he really made a name having played for Hanwha Life Esports, where they got third in spring 2021 and in the playoffs before he moved on to play for Chiefs Esports, where they had an undefeated split in summer of 2022. And a big part of it was the fact that Mir received the most player of the game awards that entire split of anybody in the LCO. And they were a world's representative for the region as well. When they came over here, doesn't feel like they dropped a beat. They became the most valuable prospect of spring 2023. And got third place after, honestly, a huge level from the rest of the roster. Yeah. Yeah, they're good for a reason, but I'm looking to, we we know all of that. That is, that is just the quintessential team Liquid Challengers here, but I'm looking forward to Team Fish Taco to see what kind of fight they could be putting up against them. As our draft is ready, our match on the horizon. I'll see you two later. Thank you very much, Sierra. We didn't have time because Pick Band was starting up to talk about the no. jungle matchup because that's where I want to bring a lot of our attention to. Rose Thorn the time for the had a fantastic uh, performance uh, just yesterday, and to really uh, you know hammer that point in, uh, Rose Thorn and Mira actually share this experience and getting yeah. the best of Yuji in particular from FlyQuest Challengers. Sorry, FlyQuest. I know you had a five-one week and you were just bragging about that on Twitter, but I had to bring it back down to earth a little bit. So which version of Rosethorn are we going to get here, Joshi? Are we going to get the stomping UG Rosethorn and FlyQuest, or are we going to get the Rosethorn that we've seen mostly throughout Summer Split, which is uh, maybe more passive style of jungling? Yeah, I'm definitely expecting not that pop-off performance, right? We have to say that as well as Rose Thorn did, it started off with a colossal mistake coming out from his opponent. And Mir is not the player who is going to be giving those up very often. That said, I would not have expected from Yuji either, right? We have seen that Yuji yeah. has been one of our top junglers. But as we start looking at the rest of the map real quick, Steve, I know there's a conversation about who the best AD carry was going to be in the league by the end of the split. Mm -hmm. Zell, he made a claim that it was going to be Arrow. I'm going to make the claim that it's going to be Spawn. The way that we have seen the growth from this player in particular has been really impressive. And one of the things that we were looking at with Team Fish Taco was we were not expecting this team to be particularly really strong in the league and when you're playing AD carry on those rosters it really is tough to look good but spawn has managed to do that anyway his willingness to step forward in a lot of these team fights has been a big point of growth and this could be the opportunity for spawn to showcase that he has learned a lot from some of his over extensions and they're already going for the Emilio first pick which it will not be answered by the Yumi since they banned Yumi TLC did not Take the handshake bands. Interesting to see him. Here's what Coach Spawn is cooking up. They're taking away the Volley Bear instead. But theoretically, this is also setting Spawn up for success too. Happy to bring him up because he is 
usually the player we talk about with Team Fish Taco. I know yesterday was a bit of an outlier yep. in the fact that Lunasi was getting those solo kills. Rosen was popping off. Even Onad had a couple yeah. of big moments there. But in general, we are looking to spawn to be the big carry for Team Fish Taco. But I will say that's a little bit of Masu slander. Uh, saying that, you know, it's going to be either Arrow or Spawn. Yeah, I think there's another I, name in that know, conversation. It is, it is. That's a conversation we can have at another time. I do want to, while we're kind of on the topic, also give a nod to him down as he was yes. pretty much unanimously considered our most improved player of Spring 2023 based on how much uh, they were able to improve, especially their laning phase and decision making. And everybody on the team has really been speaking up how much Kim Down uh, improved over the split. But as we start looking at this, it is going to be Rose Thorn returning to the Kindred, which they were able to pop off on yesterday and yep. absolutely body uh, Yuji. Now they're going to try and do the same thing to Mirror. Uh, just a, again a reminder here, real quick. With Yapu, don't play Vi. Yapu. Don't play Vi <laughs> into this. <laughs> one of them uh, was Rexai. Oh, sure. oh well, for Mirror. Rexai okay, was okay. the the one that Mirror uh, got the win. That was actually the the game that we had play of the week where he got that triple kill. True. Um, but we did we do know that Rose Thorn is very comfortable on this champion. I am liking the draft, especially. Melio with Kindred, I think, is actually a crazy combo because now you have really two good. different carries that you're going to be buffing with the extra range. Uh, really raises the stakes here. Team Liquid actually, rather than going for some kind of counter pick into the Melio, they actually go for the Lulu instead. So maybe they just think that Lulu's still up there on the power level. Like, it's not just the Yumi Melio. You can also throw her into that conversation, especially if you go with the Aphelios. I mean, I think this is definitely a sign that they are really counting on Arrow and Kim down to outlane spawn in NXI. And I think this is a very much in their wheelhouse. Well, yes, the Melio is a very good champion, and it is something that NXI has shown some of the most promise on so far throughout his time as a support. Arrow is one of the best landing AD carries that we do have in the league, yep. and he has really leveled up Kim Down's landing phase as well. That hasn't happened yet for Team Fish Taco's bottom lane, and I think this is Team Liquid just saying, yeah, you're totally good on that. We're going to make sure that Arrow will have something comfortable later on in the game regardless. And you even mentioned this in the last game, too, the fact that Arrow is one of these 80 carries that can really push a lead, too. Yes. That's one of the best things about him in this developmental league is these, you know, uh, younger, less experienced 80 carries and bot laners will approach team fights. And Arrow's got like, a, you know, half an item in a lead, but it feels like one to two items a lead based on how Arrow actually plays those. He had a yeah. deathless game yesterday with like double digit kills and assists. Absolute insane performance. Will not get the Jinx of Illusion, or rather, uh, Titan for Shaco. Spawn will not get the Jinx of Illusion because Team Liquid have taken that away. So, Spawn's Champ will get in a little pinched here. And you still have Amelia, but they're going to have to find something else to play now. Yeah, I'm really curious what they're going to be going for, as it is going to be the Viego selected here for Amir. And it really seems as though both sides of the coin yes. are really focusing around the. Kindred ultimate that will be coming through, right? Team Fish Taco have drafted it, a classic combo in the Grogs and the Kindred simply because you throw down the Lambs or Spite and instantly you just knock everybody right yep. on out of it. Spawn now going over to the Zeri and a lot of these characters are really going to be vibing right after the Lambs or Spite uh, finishes, right? When it gives that burst of healing, everybody's suddenly able to die again. Spawn's going to be having an opportunity to build up a ton of stacks and do a ton of AoE damage there as well. But you're also setting Mir up for a ton of resets, right? Because everybody's going to be low health. He goes bop, 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 eats everybody alive and yep. takes them down to that spot. And I gotta say, I'm still not a believer in the Zeri plus Emilio combo. I love me some Kogma Emilio. We have not seen that yet, or at least I haven't seen any tape of that at the semi-pro or professional level. It's been terrorizing uh, the solo queue ladder, though. If you look at the win rate of those two champions together, I still feel like it has a viable uh, option, but eh, I guess maybe they just didn't like it into this draft. They go with the Zeri and they go with the Annie instead, so much safer for Team Fish Taco, at least in terms of uh, pushing the needle on pick ban. Yeah. A little bit surprised that we're going for something as tame as this Ari at the very end. One of the things that Team Liquid has kind of been known for is their willingness to experiment with different things here in the mid lane. We know APA has a eclectic champion pool, shall we say, playing both things like the Ziggs and the Nautilus in the mid lane, but going for the Ari. And this just says to me that Team Liquid challengers are very confident just taking a standard game up here against Team Fish Taco, not taking a ton of risk, but. The flip side of that here, Steve, is I actually feel as though Team Fish Taco have everything they could have asked for in order to try and push for a win. 
You spawn on a hyper carry, NXI on a support that can assist him. Again, NXI a jungler role swapping to support this summer split. And then Rose Thorn coming off of a very hot game against FlyQuest back onto the Kindred. This does seem like the Team Fish Taco style, like what they found success on, but it's so hard to get those Stop. wins against Team Liquid Challengers, man. Nine and one for a reason. And they are on the precipice of being the first team and the only team to be able to mathematically end week one with double digit wins. Let us know in chat if you're a believer with the old TL spam or taco spam to let us know who you're rooting for. Yeah, who was that was saying they were only going to eat half a taco? Was that Perry? I think, it was Perry. I think so. It was yeah, yeah. Bad, bad, bad. yeah. A lot of teams like to have the taco puns and taco yeah, jokes it's, when they're up against it's, them. It's very easy to just throw that one out. But as we start watching this game, the player that we have to pay the most attention to early on is going to be Rose Thorn. He's gone for some very aggressive plays off of this Kindred and their ability to move around the map. And always going for a lot of invades. I know having I've been playing tennis with XG recently, he says that Rose Thorn is a little bit too cookie cutter and will tend to go for the same path over and over again. Mm. And who was it? I think it was Shochi was saying the same thing about music, right? It's like, oh, it's yep. three camps into bot lane. Rose Thorn and his kindred has been going three camps into invading the other side of the jungle. And Team Liquid is the kind of roster that will be very aggressive about scouting. Yeah, I cannot imagine Mir being the jungler to fall for that. Yuji had false sense of uh, confidence, and he fell for it in the last series oh, and believers. got hard punished. I imagine Mir is going to be, especially on the Viego pick, I believe that the last time around it was um, uh, Kindred. Actually, I still have it uh, up here. I can confirm. Wow. Kindred into... The Vi. Yeah, a little less than a Vi can do, theoretically. Yeah. Well, it is all about, like, if you land that Q, Yuji did land the Q, and then it's like, oh, crap, there is an Onet coming over the yes. wall. Yes. Now, Bradley going to be starting the trades up with Unasia relatively early. I tend to like these uh, trades for the Gragas if the trade is relatively even, just because you have sustained in ways that Bradley does not on the Cassante. You do have to be careful that you don't take too much damage in these longer trades. It looks like Bradley did get a little bit of a better version. Now, oh, back to the jungle. The proc, I think True. that's the real mission. True. Uh, the grass procs are always nine. But as we take a look at this once again, we are going for matched clears from the two jumpers, as it will be Mira not going to be presenting an obvious target coming out for Rose Thorn in this invade, and a great ward coming out from APA right at the beginning will show Mir if Rose Thorn goes for something over aggressive. Still telling you, I, I don't understand why this is matched and mirrored is mirrored because mirrors I, work a I very didn't come up particular with way. Yeah. I didn't we, come up with it. We need to change the way we explain jungle patterns. Yeah. Maybe we and, can do that live on broadcast. And we can do it with encampment brushes too. Where we I, just talk you know about what? That, I, I own that mistake. I own that one. <laughs> that one made no sense. But yeah. okay, we're gonna we're gonna bring it back. The junglers are both path towards bot side. We do not get this early invade from Rose Thorn this time around. You were just talking about how that's where he's found success. That's often what he tries to do. Not going to try that this time yep. around. Will instead just power farm and actually get slightly, ever so slightly ahead of Mir in that clear speed. That will be good for Kindred. They will be the first ones down when you have these match clears. It does mean that whoever gets there first does need to be a little bit more aggressive with their play. And with both junglers finding their way down towards the bottom side of the map, it will create a big fight over who is actually able to get this first scuttle crab and where it will be spawning. It is going to be the top side, and Mir choosing to make sure that they get the bottom side scuttle and going to be using APA's reset in order to make sure that they can have enough strength to get the top crab as well. Yeah, I didn't see if uh, Rosemar was spotted. He was hovering bot side. There was a war drop by Mir in the tri brush as he walked up, but I don't know if they have confidence that Rose Thorn was backing, that he was bot side. Either way, they're going to walk up and see a untouched Scuttle Crab, and with pressure in top and mid lane, Mir will claim to deny the early stack from Rose Thorn, and Rosemar actually just gives up. Decides to path back towards the bottom side instead. There's nothing for Rose Thorn to do on the map right now. His camps are going to be spawning top. Yeah, I mean, he knows that Mir is going to be on the top side of the map, not going to have an opportunity to do that. And you see a couple of wards put down by Bradley and APA, but you get spotted here. And yeah, now, I mean, Aaron came back to back up. That was that earlier ward placed by Mir. Really well played. They know if Rosethorn's not going to be top side because they can see if he's bot, and also everyone's pushing and then going to answer him if he's going for that top scuttle. Yeah. Really rough early game for Rosethorn here on the Kindred. Not the ideal start as Mir will even invade top, seeing the Rosethorn's bot, and clear out these camps as they're respawning. Rosethorn still has nothing to do on the map. 
And this is super tough too. APA has the flash available. Sees Rose Thorn coming in and should be able to leave as Onet's flash comes out now. Flash stun, APA just trying to buy time. Actually just turns it right back around on Onet. Didn't even need Mir's assistance. First blood picked up by APA. This is what Mir and APA tend to do to people, right? They have been so good as a mid-jungle duo so far in summer that they create so much pressure. Rose Thorn tries to go for some of these early ganks bot lane into mid lane, tries to do some jungle surfing, but doesn't get any camps, doesn't get any kills. APA that walks out ahead as Mir takes away the Gromp from Rose Thorn as well. A total collapse from Rose Thorn's early jungle pathing. Team Liquid, a mid-jungle duo like we've been talking about, is a duo that is so good at being aggressive. They've really come alive here in the summer. And I can't imagine where Rosethorn will try and find his next point of attack because he's still been spotted out. We'll see Mir passing towards this bot river. I think Team Liquid will just hard commit onto the Dragon Arrow, had priority bot lane, shoves in, takes a turret plate. So it's not only the mid jungle that's struggling, bot lane is also falling a little bit behind because of this lack of pressure that Rosethorn's been able to exert onto the Rift. It is six. Now that means another Dragon. Yeah, and, and Team Liquid, right, by showing on that ward and then going towards the Dragon, Rosethorn. Unless he just like blind hops this wall, nope, not gonna be able to find anything there. So Mira yet again finding an angle here over Rose Thorn. That was gonna be one of the big players that we were looking at, right? Is there an opportunity for Rose Thorn to find an early advantage for Team Fish Taco to play with? The answer right now is no. Mira is very, very far ahead. And as we take a look at the rest of the map, it's not colossal advantages for Bradley or Arrow, but they are still building small ones nonetheless. With so much of a focus on how the junglers will be doing, Mir looking to be very strong when it comes to these team fights. Down is going a little bit of a warded path here as APA backing him up, and Team Liquid fancy a fight. That's a kill credit to Kim down. Oh, now we'll try and trade it right on back to the Lulu who flashes away. Kim down still survives. Runs right into spawn, gives the kill back to Onat. I like that play from the support. Now Mir's got to be careful. Heartbreaker oh. and not doing enough oh. damage. Taco turning the play, spawn the carry for the team. Might have an opportunity to pop off here. That's a double kill to Zeri. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We were saying that this is going to be the other player who will need to step up for Team Fish Taco. Spawn finding a lot of money. Two kills early on, and Team Liquid not able to respond. Team Fish Taco, we were saying that we were looking for opportunities for them to be aggressive, and Rose Thorn going down here relatively early. And I love the delayed charm coming through from APA to pick up Rose Thorn as well. But him down, kind of a sacrificial lamb on the other side of the fight. Mir and APA looking to try and turn it, but not recognizing that spawn is here and still thinking that they can try and go for the fight. But they're just, they're just chilling on top of Timbers. Timbers does a lot of damage, you guys. He is able to just absolutely slap all the members of Team Liquid after their mobility is gone. If uh, Mir gets that reset, if you get the kill on Onat and turn into the Annie, get fresh resets, that's probably the the thought process from Team Liquid there is, oh, we can just wipe this. We have Viego resets. Just go for the fight still. Not expecting that Zeri damage. And like you said, Tibbers actually putting in a lot of oh, work yeah. there from Onat. So Team Fish Taco find themselves with a kill lead still behind on a little bit of gold, but signs of life for uh, what was turning into a really rough early game. Yeah. So uh, it is going to be Spawn, who we will have to watch how much they can step up later in the game. But Team Liquid, their three-man core, still looking to fight again. Onat Got him. Up, doesn't have the Timbers, but still gets the stun onto APA. Spirit Rush right into Lunasia, who will clean combo onto the Ari. Heartbreaker to safety for Mir. Not the direction you generally want your Viego to be going. Team Fish Taco assert their dominance at the Herald. Yeah, Ona and Rose Thorn really working together super well in this game so far. Able to trade a lot of damage back and forth. They had the one flub in the mid lane trying to take down APA the first time, but this time he's just sitting on a ward, ends up going down, and that's too much of Team Liquid's damage to be going down at the beginning of the fight. Now, the rest of Team Liquid have to move around. Bradley? Ona's actually just going to do damage to Bradley. Flash QI oh, doesn't have the mana. If you had more mana there. I think actually Bradley dies, but he is able to limp away here. Will not have teleport to get back to top lane. And suddenly, despite the jungle matchup being so favored for Team Liquid, still being ahead in clear, Team Fish Taco are finding gold on the map and have a slight lead. Yeah, the crucial damage dealers in Ona and Spawn already coming up. And 
I, we talk about this a lot. I talk about this a lot anyway. Uh, Ona has been a player that has been fascinating to watch their eruption onto the scene, right? Playing here for Team Fish Taco as somebody who has had a ton of confidence so far in this split, saying that there are, you know, using my words, a ton of fraud, a ton of people that he can expose that he is secretly better than. And he's had some mixed success in that, right? He will go for a lot of plays with absolutely no fear. Sometimes, you know, you got you got to land the tippers, and that is going to be the big thing as we watch this game is Onat's ability to get these fights started. He's not the only person you can engage with the team, but he is the one who has the most freedom and the most instant engage coming up for Team Fish Taco to get things started. A lot of burst already picked up by Annie, so Onat can look to pop people with a Dark Seal purchased early, has a stank in it already. And we also saw Rosethorn hovering the bot side, maybe wondering if Mir was going to go for a dive, just sticking around. Mir was on the bottom half of the map, but there's not much to do down here. Dragon spawning in 35 seconds, maybe that's a play. No, APA's linking up. Yeah. Extra moving speed coming through. Already moving down towards the bottom side. This is a powerful Great dive. Rosethorn's on the far side of the map. They don't even know until now. Onet has teleport. He triggers it, but NXI is already down. Mir goes for the reset. Heartbreakers to safety. Onat is here, has no tibbers, has no stuns stacked up. So Team Liquid, a clean dive. They pick up NXI. Yeah, good stuff coming through from Team Liquid, right? Complete surprise coming out for Team Fish Taco. That's something that it's been taking some teams some time to get used to making those plays, but you actually know, we can tell that that's the third time that Team Liquid, Mira, and APA have linked up, looking to see if there was a possibility for that play. They finally find it on their third attempt. And now, with another Dragon coming up, Team Liquid have a lot of money to spend, and they're looking for Rosie. Yeah, Rose Thorn right now on the Dragon. Starting up all alone. NXI is coming over. Ooh, Rose Thorn just dared Mir to go in right there. That's a deep teleport flank from Bradley, though. With the changes, 11 minutes, he can go for these plays. Is Team Fish Taco ready? Onat and Lunasia are grouping up. Lunasia had to walk all the way down. Here's waiting for his opportunity. No, they don't go in. So just a waste of teleport from Bradley. Maybe the catch spawn here. He will spot Bradley. Nice catch. All out. Okay, that's flash out of the Zeri. That's all Team Liquid get for the deep Cassante teleport flank. Yeah. An interesting look coming through for Team Liquid that doesn't end up heading off. It is going to be a dragon going over to Team Fish Taco. Now, it is impressive that Team Fish Taco came out of a lot of the early game with a small lead, a couple of small advantages here and there, but Team Liquid have also been a squad that does not slow the game down just because things don't go well early on. We saw that they were doing this to Supernova as well, where they were basically even with Supernova for the first half of the game until they start preying on one player in particular. They really beat up on music as the game went further, and now the question is mostly, who is Team Liquid going to be preying on in this game? Uh, it doesn't feel as though there is an obvious person for them to really target because NXI is going to be standing really far back. Ona and Rosethorn have a lot of tools to just fire whenever Team Liquid try and dump on them. And Team Liquid have to be a little bit more inventive this game in order to try and find their way. For a short window, I imagine it's spawn. Doesn't have a turret to hide behind anymore. Doesn't have a flash because of Bradley's teleport flank from earlier. So if you're looking for a target, Zeri yeah. seems to be a juicy one. As the Trinity Force completed, though, so Spawn is getting towards that powerful point as Zeri, where you're getting beefier, you're doing more damage, you're actually coming online, and you're able to output decent damage in these fights. But he's only claimed one plate now for everything that's happened earlier on. Arrow has already claimed the entire well, first turret. Now Team Liquid are just going to engage on top of them. NXI was not standing behind anybody. Does survive long enough with the Lambs for Spider. They turn it back on Amir. Amir's down. APA couldn't get the resets. Amir couldn't get the resets. And now APA's hunted. Spawn giving the kill credit. Wow, a lot of gold coming through. Rose Thorn able to throw down the Lambs for Spider in the perfect time to keep NXI alive. And Team Liquid, we've been praising this mid-jungle duo so much their ability to really take all of these fights, but they've been getting just turned around time after time. Ooh. And all right, well, that, that was cute. But yeah. still, it's Team Liquid who, even though they're going down in a lot of these situations, APA is not able to convert a lot of these attempts. They still have a small lead after all is said and done, but the question will be, can they continue to find that up against uh, Spawn? Because as he slowly builds up their opportunities to fight in this game, 
so much of the pressure from Team Liquid is going to be put towards spawn. He will be tankier and tankier as the game goes. It'll be harder and harder for them to take this guy down. We've already said how much more he can do now that he's feeling confident with his play in these fights. And in that one engagement during the replay, we saw Mir misses the stun on the NXI. If that lands, that would be enough damage alone to take down the rest of NXI's health bar. And uh, rough that they were not able to kill Emilio. Again, one reset for Team Liquid's comp can turn the entire play with both the Ari and the Viego looking for those. And find either one. And now Team Liquid, even though they still have a little bit of a, a gold lead, they're giving gold over to the important member. I'd love to take a look at the current gold graphs here to see how much gold Spawn has compared to Arrow. Yeah. He did get all the plates and the full turret earlier. But I imagine Spawn pretty close as Team Fish Tago now group up, start to look for the contest at the Herald. AP chunked out NXI off screen there. And now has a flank. Onat spotting APA and just jumps on top of him. Has the Hextech rocket belt. And APA is now having to reposition all the way back around here for the fight. Yeah. This front to back should be really good for Keeper Taco. The ferret is going to get taken down. I see here the ghost pump. Everybody still just running around Team Liquid trying to find their opportunity to engage, but Lunasi has a great flank. Okay, I don't believe that Team Fish Taco got that. Oh, no, they did. Yeah, Team Liquid secure the smite, but they cannot get to uh, the actual buff itself. Team Fish Taco holding the line and just daring Team Liquid to keep engaging into them, Team Liquid not willing to walk up. Yeah, I mean, they had great vision on Lunasi. They knew that any kind of fight was going to be suicide, trying to go into that garage, because with so many squishy members on the side of Team Liquid, want to take a little bit more time, and by denying the Rift, well, you know, it's a little bit of gold, but they still lose the mid lane turret because of positioning Team Liquid had to take. And honestly, Onat doing a really good job matching up against APA, who has had a lot of good games, has become one of our players that people have been very excited about. <laughs> this league as we start setting up for this next dragon. Keepish Taco have a fantastic a death track. rush. Yeah, okay, now they're, they're just going for the invade. They don't need to wait for Team Liquid to walk into them. Just walk to Team Liquid. Miras a Heartbreaker away. And that should just guarantee the dragon. Oh, even Bradley was up here. Is Cassante hard to lock down, hard to kill? But they do not do either. Arrow, meanwhile, looking onto Lunasia. Flashes the wall. Does not want to deal with that. Oh, <laughs> Uh, unfortunate time for Grom to spawn right there, but either way, Lanasi is fine. Yeah, and as the turret goes down the far side of the map, Team Liquid still keeping the gold very, very even. So Arrow will be getting a lot of his team's uh, gold allocation throughout this game. Now, the big thing for Arrow, right? And my biggest thing as I watch this player is he's very good at taking fights that are already winning and finding extra kills in those fights that a lot of AD carries won't because of how aggressively he tends to step up. But there are also a lot of tools on the side of Team Fish Taco to try and catch him out. And this has been an issue that he has had for at least three splits running from this position. So, I made the claim earlier, Steve, that most teams are not in a position to actually punish Arrow when he steps too far forward. You have an Annie, you have Gragas, and you have Spawn who can just run him down. This is going to be the primary means by which I'm expecting Team Fish Taco to try and generate their own advantage rather than waiting for Team Liquid to go aggressive on their own. You only have one Lulu to keep you safe for Arrow as well. He does have the cleanse and the flash is coming off cooldown though. So it will not be easy for Team Fish Taco to lock him down and blow him up, but it's not the hardest thing in the world. They do have tools to accomplish that. And I imagine Team Fish Taco will be focused on that going forward. So far, it's been about putting Mir behind and APA behind, but Arrow has been getting fed throughout this entire time. Looks to take down another turret right here. Bradley just standing in front. Oh, oh, nice. Fish Taco are grouping around though. Big charm on a Rose Thorn. APA chunks him out and oh, all the chakrams from Arrow. Take him down to about 25% health. They don't get the turret though. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the rocket belt coming out from Onat being traded for the ultimate from 8K, pretty good opportunity for Onat. And I love how his confidence, right? Everybody on Team Liquid, every time they see this Annie running around, knows that they need to be, be backing up. He's missed a couple of the stuns so far, but hey, the fact that he will keep on looking for them is one of the best parts about this player. So as we start looking for the next couple of objectives, we have another dragon spawning in three minutes. And neither team are really in a position to uh, fight for this. Aaron that's spawning here very shortly. Instead, 
We're going to be giving a lot of time over to both Arrow and Spawn to build up a couple more items. Arrow pushed out from the wave oh. right now, though. It seems that are actually approaching him. He's doing a lot of damage to Rose Thorn. Doesn't seem like he's getting enough of traded back, but APA, meanwhile, got engaged on by Onad. Asya? Got over the wall, has the Tibbers down. Kim down in trouble. The big engage from Team Fish Taco. They just commit into the jungle, and Team Liquid lose their support. Bradley went for the teleport flank, but yet again doesn't find anything for it. Body slammed, buffers it. He's able to get to safety for now. Arrow still trying to pepper out some damage. Oh. Got to be careful, though. Onat with these stuns can still look for it. Yeah, and Team Liquid, it just feels like they are getting out-rotated. This is really good coming out from Team Fish Taco and their ability to continue pressuring Team Liquid after a couple of mistakes from two of the best players, Amir and APA. And now Team Much Liquid, their approach. lineup to contest is 4v5. Kim Down's the only one that fell. The damage dealers are still up. Notably, APA has fear at rush. This Ari needs to put some work here as Arrow doesn't have a lot to work with, but they just lose Bradley. Team Fish Taco snap engage away from the Baron, jump onto Team Liquid's members, and their big beefy front line is now out of the fight. APA chunks Mir on a flank right now. Can't really find the way in though. Arrow's just trying to do some damage to Lunasia. Says, all right, nobody's threatening me right now. The Gragas, it oh. could be in trouble. Low That's mana it. for Arrow, but he's doing baby. a lot of damage. Watch for Mir, Heartbreaker's available. He's looking for it. Team Fish Taco decided to back off. They were taking a lot of damage from Baron. Yeah, really good positioning from Team Liquid to force Team Fish Taco into a spot where they have to use the Lambs to fight to keep themselves alive. Team Liquid will equalize the mid lane turret here. And we start to turn our attention once again towards the bottom side of the map. We have another dragon spawning Team Liquid. Playing the setup really intelligently so far, but they are still looking at a deficit going into Team Fish Taco. And yeah. So much of this is about the trigger pull that Ona has been having so far, creating a ton of pressure on players like APA and Mir, and kind of looking like Saligo in their ability to shut down a lot of the plays that the flankers have been going for so far. I want to go back to just what happened over those last couple of minutes. Team Fish Taco did three things in a row with Baron. They used the Baron setup for Vision to catch Kim down. Then they use the Baron as a bait to get Bradley in, kill him. Then they're on Baron, but they decide to peel off of it because yeah. they don't want to give resets. Three decisions around one objective that got them a big lead after that. Even though they do lose the mid turret, it's still cool to see a team like Team Fish Taco make those decisions. As now they control the access point from mid lane into yeah. the dragon, oh. which is spawning in 15. I just want to point out as Nazia goes, Onat goes. By, yeah, big charm, actually. Onat flashes forward. Got on to APA, and that's the Ari down. Bradley, yet again, on the flank, has not found anything. No all-out angle onto key carries. No response from Team Liquid. They lose their mid laner for a couple of summoner spells. This is Team Liquid, right? This is them trying to play around Arrow. Arrow, the instincts that make him a good laner, Puts Team Liquid in a lot of uncomfortable positions by moving so far forward. He puts Team Liquid in a spot where they have to fight. Now Lunasi has a flank. Yet again, another turn! They got Kim down. They're gonna go for Bradley now. Arrow trying to output as much damage as he can, but he does not have enough space to work with Bradley running for the hills. Mir might get a reset though. A lot of low health. Oh, he can't get onto NXI. That might have been oh. a flash angle just to guarantee the kill, but Bradley does fall. Team Fish Taco keep consistently punching above their weight class this weekend and are pushing Team Liquid to the edge. This is such a tough position for Team Liquid to try and bounce back from as his Marin does get started off. They're looking at maybe a steal coming through from Mir. He's got the ultimate, he's got the flash to get over the he's wall, but they're all over the place. APA is dropping vision and jumps into the pit. Oh, just, just popped dead. immediately. Now Onat realizes, okay, there's a Viego on this side. I'm just gonna push him away. Heartbreaker and flash available. They just need to keep vision on Mir. Don't let him into the pit, and Team Fish Taco have this. But he's in there. Heartbreakers forward, Lambs are spiked to buy time. Focus down Mir, kill the Viego. Oh, it's stolen by Arrow! The Avelio takes Baron, while Team Fish Taco are worried about the Viego. Uh, silver Lightning's coming through as they do take that down. They are looking for Rose Thorn, but will they be able to pick him up? Uh, they know exactly where really he is. really rough spot, actually. Gonna try and jump over the wall, but right into Bradley's waiting arms and Team Liquid, their AD carry just doing it all himself, steals the objective, gets another kill, and keeps Team Liquid in this game. Team Liquid, they suddenly find this falls in a spot to contest the dragon as well. But this is incredible. 
incredibly confusing as to how to smite this, right? As soon as Mirit jumps over the wall, the Lancer Spike goes down. Make sure that Baron does not die. And all of this, realistically, almost anybody can try and pick up this Baron. Everybody just throws out abilities at the same time. They're calling to try and kill Mir. But as soon as the Lancer Spike Ooh. falls, the ultimate comes through from Kim down, keeps Mir alive. Between his damage and Arrow's damage, they are the ones that come up victorious. And then Rosethorn, a little too aggressive, tries to pick up the mark. And as we look around the rest of the map, it is going to be Team Liquid, who should be equalizing here on the Dragons. Two to two Dragons for both teams. Team Fish Taco not only lose out on the Baron, but they cannot continue their Dragon stacking. And it seems like Team Liquid, for a short period here, will be back in towards the driver's seat. There's not a lot of other objectives on the map, but with Baron up, they can start to reestablish control of their lanes, maybe look to siege a turret or two. There's no outer turrets left, so it might be bold to actually go for a big push onto a tier two, but at least they can stabilize, start getting more gold into Arrow's pocket. Who, let's be honest, is the key carry right now. I mean, Mir and AP are having rough games. It is coming down to Arrow to really carry. Yeah, I mean, Arrow has a lot of their damage, but you look at his opponent here in spawn, who already has the three items completed on the Zare. He has effectively 3,000 HP, and Team Liquid's ability to start fights was really predicated on how strong Ari and Viego were going to be in this game. They tried to make a bunch of plays happen in the mid game. They found the bot lane dive. They were looking for NXI around the bottom side river, but Team Fish Taco were able to fire right on back. Again, the trigger pull, the hair trigger that we do see on Onat makes any siege super, super dangerous because of how quickly the enemy can go for these stuns. Partly why I was not expecting these sieges to happen. Oh, but wow. Liquid had a really good setup for the mid lane. Now they grab a wave bot lane, but they are getting chased down. Rosethorn range with Emilio on top of the Kindred is kind of crazy. And Arrow and APA both get chunked uh -oh. out. So Team Liquid do not get the second tier two turret, but they did claim one. And that was a really rough spot there for a moment. <laughs> I got some deja vu, right, when Arrow jumps over this wall. I was wondering if Spawn was going to do it. I think he might have actually been able to make the play happen, but Team Liquid, they're applying the game back. Only a thousand gold behind at this point, but it does feel like Team Fish Taco are still the ones in control of the map, right? They're the ones who have the ability to start fights when they want to, and while Team Liquid is doing a good job at making sure their waves are pushed out so it's tough for Team Fish Taco to actually go for any fights around objectives. Team Fish Taco are consistently moving around as a goon squad, trying to find one person caught out at any given point because if Onai gets on top of them, if Lunasia finds an angle to get into them, Team Liquid are going to melt. An interesting look there from Team Fish Taco as they grouped up as five in the top jungle. There was not much to take. They just get some wards down and now will correct their waves as the Baron buff is no longer on the table for Team Liquid. I want to bring our attention back to the key carries, though, because yes, while Arrow is doing well, Arrow also looks at Venasia there in the jungle to take away some camps. I mean, Spawn's also popping off. Actually, yep. ahead by about 30 CS, 506 on the Zeri. No slouch in the carry department. So Arrow, it's not like it's, oh yeah, he's ahead. He can be the carry. It's like, no, you have to outperform <laughs> expectations yeah. based on the current gold situation on the Rift as Spawn is looking for that fourth item. If they can get that fourth item before the next Dragon fight, that is huge for Team Fish Taco. Watching Arrow positioning in these fights is just giving me a heart attack every single time, right? He's forcing the rest of Team Liquid to play to him, and now Team Fish Taco, they have the inside track, and Team Liquid have no engage like to try this. and force anything. This is going to be the inhibitor going down. This is huge. They kept the wave safe. We saw Team Liquid hovering around trying to hit that wave, and Taco said, no, we're just going to put our bodies in front of the minions so we can walk these up, take the turrets, take the inhibitor. Now, can they get out? Lunasi is quite tanky, he can buy space. They just jump out of Bradley, who is looking at the flank pattern. All outs in, onto Rose Thor. Not enough damage though, Bradley's trying to get the safety. Oh. Arrow's out putting insane damage in the team fight, but Rose Thor chases him down now. As Team Fish Taco, nobody falls from either side, but you gotta favor them in the trade. They get the inhibitor. There will now be super minions making pressure for them as they're looking at Baron and Dragon. Yeah, luckily for Team Liquid, this is the easiest inhibitor to try and deal with on the board. But we are seeing the pains that Team Liquid is having in their lack of ability to engage. And even if you do, you're going into a Kindred Annie and Gragas, right? These characters are so good at trying to deal with those situations. And now as Team Fish Taco come back out onto the map, they are once again calling the shots. They have all the tools that they need. Spawn is strong. Onat is ready to go. And this, I think, if 
Steamfish Taco can close this one out. Likely to be the biggest upset, I think, of the entire split so far. Steamfish Taco really pushing our number one team to the edge. I would have to agree, Joshi. And, and not only the fact that they're taking Team Liquid to the edge, if they win this, that would be huge, but the fact they also did it to FlyQuest in such dominating fashion. True. This is a different look. This is not the, oh, we blew them out of the water. They were making mistakes and we punished. This was Team Liquid were doing what they often do. APN Mir grouping up, trying to go for plays on the map, and yeah. Team Fish Taco absorbing it, answering the plays, getting their own flanks, their big engages from Onad. It's a different way to win, and it is a more commanding way to win in my eyes, because it's not just blowing them out, it's winning clean. Now, Team Liquid approached the bear, and it started up by Team Fish Taco. Mir has a big flank, so does Lunasia. I don't know that Mir is here. Putting a lot of damage to the bear, and they decide to go in onto APA. He misses. They still don't know that Mir's there. Look at all the health bars of Team Fish Taco. That was a bad oh, start to play for them, and NXI is separated from the rest of the team. That is support down. Wow, a great catch coming through as NXI just goes the wrong direction. Another charm. As Mir just looking for even more opportunities. They can move over towards the dragon, and Mir is still hunting around. This is the thing that we were looking at, though, right? Team Fish Taco, when they were trying to make the play, they know there's they one person him. here. They see Lunasia, explosive cast to available. He will need to use it. And all out from Bradley will seal Lunasia's wow. fate. Shut down for Mir. It's support and top laner. That means Baron. Wow, these small, small moments. Team Liquid giving up so many waves, so many minis in order to try and find this comeback. Team Fish Taco trying to come back in. Can Rosethorn steal? Rosethorn's here. He can jump into the pit, use the Lancer Spike to buy more time if they want to, or just go for the steal. He flashes and misses it. Secured by Mir. Team Fish Taco will now most likely just get wiped. They lose their jungler. Spawn and Onat are still alive. But so is Arrow doing a lot of damage back to Spawn, who could be in trouble. NXI ran all the way back up here. Is this Spawn's moment? Is this the Watch Zeri the moment? Watch the charm. He, he gets lands a charm. They caught him! And that's a shutdown for Arrow. Spawn's out of there. Now Team Fish Taco in full retreat. Teleport flank coming in here from APA, who will catch NXI. This could be an ace. I can't believe they've done this. I can't believe oh, no. after everything we're set up, Team Fish Taco in so much control around the fight. It is Team Liquid on the smallest of margins, completely wiping everyone on Team Fish Taco. They are once again in a spot where they can start playing more of the pressure game. They've gotten all their members to very strong spots, and they should be able to pick up another dragon. But as we take another look at this, I mean, it comes through APA threatening to go for the back and spawn, trying to live up to the hype we've been giving them with so much confidence, but gets caught by the charm and just run down at that point. Team Fish Taco, they try and run away, but there is no running to be done when APA goes for these teleports. I think he was uh, auto attacking there and a ward went down. I'm pretty sure that's what that's happened. That's not how Q works. Is it not? All right, no. fair enough. <laughs> well, regardless, he I stops appreciate it. the idea. He that stops is a great to way to hit the ward. True. And then, because he's not moving, the charm is able to just snipe AD him carry right, brain, right? <laughs> yeah. But fact, still. I've actually never had that feature turned on my keyboard. I click every single auto attack, but that's ah. my own problem. Spawn clearly. There you go. He has the mechanics, has the ability to try and carry these. Got a little overconfident there. Has still not hit that fourth item. I was going to note that earlier. It didn't come up, though. Yeah. It opted for the stopwatch instead. Didn't even get a chance to use it in that fight. And now Arrow is right back into the game. And technically has more gold spent, more stats under his pocket than spawn right now. Yeah. You want to know the other heartbreaking thing about that last dance? What? I mean, it was APA playing Onet. Right? The fact that Onet throws out the flash stun, it's nothing. It allows Team Liquid to play knowing that the main engage tool is down. Right. Team Liquid, they have to give so much respect over to Ta Team Fish Taco's ability to start fights because it, it's basically flanks from Mir and charms from APA. And Team Liquid, they gotta play on these slims and margins. This was something that we saw coming out from Team Liquid in their back to back wins. Okay, Bradley catching Lunasia yet again. Nice Not tanky enough this time around. Four item of Felios is just shredding through that Gragas. And Bradley now feeling the confidence, just willing to go for these types of plays, engaging. Team Fishtok will have to mount a defense without their beefiest member. Yeah. Ah, it's so much on Ona, but this, this is, I'm getting shades 
of 2022 Team Liquid, right? This is how they used to play. This is how they made so many wins happen when it didn't feel like they were supposed to. They would play on the edge of what was possible so well, waiting for uh, Team Fish Taco and their opponents to just go for abilities and punish the whips. And now, Team Liquid, you're mostly waiting. Right, we have a couple of minutes left before the next set of major objectives spawn, Steve, and it should mean that spawn will get themselves two core items. They're already on almost all the core, but Arrow has already found their fourth one, has a stopwatch as well. And the opportunities for Team Fish Taco to blow up Arrow out of nowhere are starting to dwindle. Spawn's got to have like 2,000 in the bank right now. Oh, yeah. Just purchases the Bloodthirster, as we're saying that there we go. Spawn has reached four items with stopwatch, matching Arrow in gold so spent kill. right now. But Team Liquid have the earlier setup in the bottom jungle. There's no objectives to play for, but they're still looking for this tier two turret and Lunasia Ooh. might get caught here. Explosive cast early, has to flash. Saving the body slam, Rosestone trying to cover the retreat and Lunasia does get out, but at the expense of two big cooldowns. Now the ultimate will be up by the time the Dragon and the Baron do spawn, but the Flash will not. That's another tool that Team Fish Taco will not have for the engage. And Team Liquid now, as they are starting to line up for this, they should struggle to try and take down this structure with the amount of wave player that spawn has picked up for themselves. But the big thing to look at is, again, they play this pressure game in ways that a lot of other teams have been struggling to match. This is one of the things that we look at four squads that are continuing to play together. And Arrow! Oh! Ooh, instant cleanses. I don't even know if that stun landed from Onab, but either way, cleanse down for the Aphelios. Laying on the edge. I know he gives you heart attacks every time. Every time. He did survive that one. He did. But like you said, right? <sighs> is it even Arrow there? Onab just missed the ultimate. The cleanse didn't actually do anything. And so, the one thing that we ready look for it, though. He's ready. He's ready. We got to be careful, right? That is the one loss condition that Team Liquid do have, is Onat finding one of these ultimates, finding one of these big stuns to pick someone off. And Arrow is the one person who, if they go down, that is way too much of Team Liquid's damage to prevent opportunities for APA and Nier to start looking for some of these easy resets. They just need that one pick, that one carry down. I mean, I'm looking at Arrow, I'm also even looking at APA. If you get yeah. the Ari, I still feel like you're happy about it. It's just eliminating one of the damage threats could be a big deal for Team Fish Taco to then say, all right, well, now we can walk up to the next objective. Dragon and Baron are coming up shortly after each other. Baron first in 10 seconds and Dragon in 25. Both teams are now starting to get this mid-priority push. You can control this, you can control which side of the map you want to go towards. And right now, it looks like Team Fish Taco are hovering the Baron side. Spawn playing a little bit far forward. Mir and Bradley. Ooh, I love the look. Not gonna land it this time, but Team Fish Taco airing towards the Baron, whereas Team Liquid are moving multiple members over towards the Cloud Soul and oh, we're Team Fish Taco to are pulling the trigger first. And look at where Lunasia is positioned. I mean, Zeri plus Kendra do a lot of damage very fast. Lunasia on a deep flank right here. Team Liquid are walking up. Watch for Arrow. Oh, oh the Moonlight Vigil. Massive damage, almost just one shot NXI. Here comes Mir. Now Mir and AP on the flank. Oh god. Deep in enemy territory. They're going oh for it, and they're jumping right on top of all members of Team Fish Taco. A triple kill to Arrow and a double to APA, making a double for both as Lunasia doesn't go down yet. In a lot of trouble though. Trying to run away, he does make it out, but Team Liquid with a trigger pull, they will win the team fight and win this game. A crazy chaotic start and pivot into mid game, but Team Liquid are so good in these late game team fights, they will claim game number one. The way that Team Liquid are able to move around these fights is second to nobody in this league. These guys are so good at finding angles in. They know that it's not about whether or not you win. It's always about how you find the ways in. They push and they prod and they find the way. AP and Mir at the very end. You see that the micro flank, they walk right around the blue buff and it's like, yep. where do you go from there? There's nothing you can do. Uh, what was that uh, tweet from earlier? If you give Team Liquid an inch, he'll take a mile. And those are the inches. The whole game felt like it was, you know, going either way. Team Fish Taco were in it until that one moment where it's like, nope, now Team Liquid just kind of run through you. <laughs> you gave them that inch, and they'll you know, take that all the way to the Nexus. That's game one. Let's see what Team Fish Taco have prepared for game number two, because we're going to send it to a short break before we bring back Sierra for the Rally Cry halftime show. We'll see you there.